I want a potato with some serious potato cakes. <laughs> Hello crochet friends, I'm Grace Face and welcome to another video. I think that one of the fun elements of the internet is that it can introduce you to people who you never would have had the opportunity to meet otherwise. As someone who is socially awkward and extremely anxious, making friends has never really been my strong suit. You're way more likely to find me just at home, chilling, doing something crafty with my cats. So the internet has been great at helping me find friends with common interests. When I'm not crocheting, I enjoy playing video games on my PlayStation. While I like playing all kinds of games, I do tend to spend a lot of time playing shooters and my favorite franchise would be Battlefield. I have made a ton of friends online just by playing Battlefield, but there are three people in particular who I would call my squad. And that would be Near Misses and Rice Bandit, who are a married couple, and Army Eagle. We met over five years ago playing Battlefield 5 and have been gaming together ever since. While the games that we play may change depending what everyone's in the mood for, one thing has always stayed the same. We're together, gaming, eating snacks, having fun chit-chatting while we play. One of the consistent topics of discussion and activities we engage in while gaming is snacks. We are always munching on snacks, discussing snacks, or sharing our latest snack finds in our group chat. I mean, the group chat we're in is called Snacks for the Win. So when I started thinking what I was gonna do for these people for Christmas last year, my mind just naturally drifted towards food. I thought it would be really cool if we could all eat something together. I was reminded of those international snack boxes that you can order. And I was like, what if I did something like that for my friends? Since we all live in different parts of the country and distance prevents us from meeting up in person, why don't I create a shared experience for us virtually? So here's the plan. I'm going to procure a variety of snacks that we've never had repackage them up into boxes, and then ship those snack boxes to my friends. Then, after Christmas, we can all get together on the PlayStation Network and try them together as a group since we can't get together in person. And if I'm gonna make a gift box to send to my friends, you know it has to include some crochet. I wanna crochet each of them a gift and then put that gift into the boxes I send them. Initially, I wanted all of those gifts to be snack related, but fate had other plans and only one of the three is going to be snack themed. My buddy Rice Bandit is known to rage on the mic a bit when gaming, and he has let out some pretty choice phrases that we get a kick out of. I thought it would be really fun to make him some F-bombs. That way he can throw those at the screen instead of his controller. Also while doom scrolling on TikTok, I happened to come across a really cool no-sew pattern for a hammerhead shark. I knew the instant I saw that, ARMY was gonna love it. So hopefully we can forgive the fact that there's only one snack themed crochet gift, and that is gonna be an emotional support potato for my friend near misses. Unfortunately, she's been going through a little bit of health challenges lately. She is on the mend and things are gonna be okay, but I thought it would be nice for her to have an emotional support potato to help keep her company through some trying times. So that's the general overview of what we're gonna do in this video today. We're gonna crochet a potato, a shark, and some F-bombs. And then we're going to get some snacks and repackage those into a snack tasting experience my friends and I can all enjoy together. I do want to note that I am recording some of these segments out of order and I recently cut my hair. You will notice that my hair is different in the majority of this video. I hope it's not too distracting. For Mrs. Potato, I decided to purchase a pattern from my friend, Tiny Friends Crochet. She just released a food related bundle, which was super cute, as well as she already had a potato pattern. So I picked up both of those on her Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale. My cat has decided to eat a bunch of kibble. If you hear crunching in the background, that is why. They thrive on doing noisy things the instant I decide to record. It was a good opportunity to support my friend while also supporting my pattern addiction. I bought a couple of these giant cones of brown, uh, I think this is cocoa, just chenille yarn from Premier. Since I had loads of that on hand, I figured I would make a few potatoes cause I love potatoes and I love to crochet and can't stop, won't stop. Her potato pattern comes with two different potatoes, larger size potato and then a baby potato. This is the larger size potato. <laughs> He's really cute. But wait, there's more. ba donk, -a -donk. <laughs> Potato got potato cakes. Double cheeked up. So chunky. So this was the smaller potato. I did make it 
taller because I just felt like he wanted to be taller. I don't know. I like to improvise. I can't just follow directions. Something's wrong with my brain. The doctors say it's ADHD. Both of these potatoes are friggin' adorable. <laughs> However, I want to make it bigger. So what we're going to do is instead of making this with the just chenille yarn, we're going to step up a size and we're going to make it with Premier Basics chenille, which is a larger chenille blanket yarn similar to Burnap blanket. I want a chunkier potato. I want a bigger potato. I want a potato with some serious potato cakes. <laughs> I want Mrs. and Rice to die laughing when they see the ass on this potato. <laughs> So step one in this process is going to be making a potato with massive potato cakes, hauling a big old dump truck in the back. I say I want to make them laugh until they cry, but honestly, like I'm already laughing my ass off. <laughs> okay, we're gonna, we're gonna stop goofing and I'm gonna start crocheting. We're gonna switch to time-lapse mode. Okay, he still needs a face, but I have a potato. <laughs> And in case you were wondering, he definitely has a butt. So yeah, he still needs facial details, but he's basically done as far as, you know, the, the crocheting part goes. So he clearly needs a face, but hey, look at him. A little chunky potato with his potato cakes. Speaking of potato cakes, I'm super hungry. It's dinner time. I'm going to go eat some food and then I'll come back and we'll do some more. Dinner has been had and facial details have also been added. I would like to introduce you to my new potato son. <laughs> He's so cute. I would fight a thousand wars for him. And let us not forget that he is also hauling around a dump truck. I really hope Mrs. likes this potato as much as I do. <laughs> Look at it next to this other one. Oh my God, they're so cute. My son has a son. I'm a crochet potato grandmother. Okay, enough crochet potato goofing. We need to get moving on something else. Next up on our agenda is to make some F-bombs for Rice Bandit. I personally did not feel the need for a pattern for an F-bomb myself. If you need a pattern or would like a pattern for an F-bomb, there are 11 of them for free on Ravelry in the search that I did. Please feel free to go over to Ravelry and support any one of those 11 people and give their pattern a go. As I was looking at the available F-bomb patterns on Ravelry, some of them had like a little black cap on top of the F-bomb. Some of them had a gray cap. Some of them don't have a cap at all. And it got me thinking, well, what, are, what is the general consensus anyway? Like, should it have a gray cap? Because in my mind, I was for some reason picturing a gray cap. I figured let's go straight to the source, the internet, and ask it what it looks like. So I just Googled cartoon bombs. Most of them seem to have a black ball with a black cap on it, kind of like a Christmas ornament shape with a wick hanging out the end and the end of the wick is on fire. So that is the consensus we're going to go with. In my mind, I really had seen it as gray, but most of them seem to be black. Going with black would be easier because then I don't have to change colors. So let's just go with black. We'll make a black ball with a little black kind of cap on the top of it. And my idea for the wick is to make a pom-pom, like a little baby pom-pom out of red, orange, and yellow yarn, and then tie that on to the chain that we will use to be the wick of the F-bombs. We have a generic plan. I need to fish out my little pom-pom makers. I know I bought a set of three at Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna find my pom-pom maker, grab the yarns that I need from my yarn wall, and then we will go into time-lapse mode and I will make some F-bombs. I grab my trusty 6.5 millimeter crochet hook and some black blanket yarn and got to work crocheting those F-bombs while watching Attack on Titan. And let me tell you, I got so in the zone watching Attack on Titan and crocheting that I completely spaced that I was going to make the caps for the F-bombs out of black yarn and do them as a no-sew. So what you'll see me do here is just finish off once I got a little black ball made and move on to the next one. Unfortunately, that wasn't what I was planning on doing and I'm just gonna take that as a sign, as fate acting to keep us on the original creative vision, which was to have the gray caps. 
So that is what I ended up doing is just making three gray caps separately. It only took a second. I just did like a magic circle and six in the magic circle, put a single crochet in every one of the six, did a slip stitch, finish off, bam, made three of those, and then sewed those onto the top of the F-bomb. The next step was for me to make some pom-poms to use as the lit part of the fuse. I had to go dig out my pom-pom makers. I'd never even used the tinier one before. It'd been so long since I have used these pom-pom makers, I completely forgot how to even use them and I had to Google the instructions. But you know, I got the answer. That's all that really mattered. I do think that the red, orange, yellow combo worked out well to make it look like the fuse was on fire. The one flaw in my plan here was that I tied off my pom-poms with a yellow yarn and then I ended up just having to connect them with the white yarn. It would have made more sense for me to tie off the pom-poms with the white yarn. It would have saved me a little bit of trouble. So if you're deciding to do that, that's probably the smarter way to go about it. Either way, I got those pom-poms all trimmed up and it was ready to move on to the F part and assembly. I made gray caps for them. And then I have little fuses that I made. The bomb part itself is done. And now I just need to make the F part to turn these into an F bomb. And then we need to assemble all three of them. After finishing the F appliques for the front of our bombs, I got to work assembling all of the components. I threaded the wicks onto my sewing needle and then attached those to the gray cap then I attached the gray cap onto the black bomb part. Then it was time to sew the appliques onto the front of the F-bombs. I did my best to line them up and keep them even with sewing pins and then stitch evenly across the edge of the F so that it would have a clear definition and you would easily be able to tell what it was supposed to be. We all remember my caked up potato sun. Let me introduce to you F-bombs. <laughs> I am very happy with how this turned out. These are exactly what I envisioned in my brain when I was thinking about what an F-bomb should look like. So it worked out. I know I went into some like existential crisis mode about what is a bomb in a cartoon even look like anyway. Just ended up right back with my creative vision of the little gray cap on them. I really hope that Rice likes these. I like these. Moving on, it's shark time. I once again grabbed my trusty 6.5 millimeter crochet hook and got to work crocheting Gus the Hammerhead Shark. This pattern is a no-sew hammerhead shark pattern from The Knot Artisan. I will put her information on screen and as always I'm going to link all of the creators I discuss down below in case you would like to go and support them and check out these amazing patterns as well. My friend Army Eagle is a huge fan of all marine life, but especially sharks. While his favorite shark is not a hammerhead shark, I knew he would love anything shark related. I always loved hammerhead sharks. I think they are my favorite shark. They're really unique and cool, and I think they have like a, a fun expression with those wide set eyes. If you're a fan of sharks or of marine creatures or of no sew patterns, I highly recommend this pattern. It's really well thought out and designed and the finished product is pretty awesome. I like this shark so much, I really didn't want to put it in a box and send it to my friend. I wanted to keep it. I'm going to have to go back in and make another one for myself because I was super jealous of his shark. I feel like a lot of no sew patterns are smaller or less detailed patterns. So having a really well designed, uh, good looking shark pattern that's a no sew is a big win. So kudos to the knot artisan. The shark is basically done. He still needs his eyes, and then I need to close the gaps in the head. I decided it's a great opportunity to use my safety eyes. I've got a bunch of safety eyes I got from Nerdy Knits, my friend Nikki. She does a really awesome mystery bag every month where you can get a bunch of different eyes and accessories, and you also get a crochet pattern with it, which is really, really cool. So we need to give our shark his eyes. I am gonna stick my finger in here and try to line up. I think this will be in the right spot. 
We're gonna take our little washer for our safety eyes, move all this stuffing out of the way and plop on my washer. I acted like this was gonna be easy because I thought it was. It's times like these I do wish I had a little safety eye tool. Ah, oh, but I don't and I have the worst hands. I don't really use safety eyes that often. In my use of safety eyes, I've not really had too many issues getting the washers on. But right now I gotta say that this does not want to effing go. And I don't know how I'm gonna get the safety eye on here without a tool. It's like, I, I get it down like two millimeters and then it's like, no, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go see if I can find something around the house to use to get these safety eyes adhered. I got the safety eyes in, but at what cost? Because I did just break my thumbnail and my hands feel like they have zero strength left, but the shark has eyes. This is why I don't use safety eyes. Now I just need to put the stuffing back in around these eyes and then close this guy up and it should be all done. I'm gonna go do that. I'm super pleased with how this shark has turned out. I am so stoked about this shark. He's so cute. I love him so much. I'm jealous. Like, I want this one. So the first thing we're going to need if we're going to put snacks in a snack box is a bunch of snacks. And you know what? I've got just the thing right here. <laughs> So I've got some sweet stuff right here, and then we've got our savory option. After a lot of waffling on what to do for the savory option, I did end up finding something really good. Ruffles all dressed. If you've never had these chips before, they're pretty darn good. I tried them once a long time ago when they released them at a previous point as a special edition. These are a Canadian chip flavor and it is a combination of a bunch of different flavors or four flavors according to Wikipedia. Ketchup, barbecue, sour cream and onion, and salt and vinegar. For some reason I was remembering it as sour cream and cheddar. Regardless, they're really tasty. Unfortunately for me, it seems like earlier this year, Lay's did a Kettle Cook special edition where they had an all-dressed flavor and I completely missed it. They were supposedly being carried at two of my local grocery stores. I went to the grocery stores just to check and they did not have them. I was pretty bummed. They had a game day chili flavor and I didn't buy it because I was just so like robotically one track minded about must find all dressed chips, must find all dressed chips that I did not buy the game day chili and I really regretted not getting it. When I went back, they didn't have it anymore. We'll have to pour one out on the curb for the snacks that we didn't get to try along the way. <laughs> Moving on to sorting out the sweet elements of our snack box. I went with Kit Kat. Now I don't know how many of each different flavor I got and that's where the sorting part is gonna come in. We need to go through the chocolates and sort out how many of each different flavor we got and then divvy those up to try to make it as even as we can and see if, if we can all have the same flavors. I'm not sure, let's find out. One thing that I am gonna throw in I did buy locally at the Dollar Tree are these Kit Kat Thins in a chocolate hazelnut flavor. I assume it's gonna be like a Nutella flavor, so I got a bag of these for each of us. After sorting through all of my Kit Kats like a Halloween candy haul, we ended up having 10 flavors that we'll all get to try together plus four extra flavors. Some of these I don't remember what the flavors are and they're not printed in English. So I'll have to look it up on our sheet here to see what the 10 different flavors that we will have are. One of my Kit Kat sampler boxes also came with a little sampler array of chocolates. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but I think they're called Tyrol. It is T-I-R-O-L and they have a bunch of different flavors and they're just like little one inch squares of chocolate. So I got a variety of those guys. Each flavor only has two options. I'm just going to go through those and do those up as well and give each one of us a varieties. Now the order of events is who gets what so I'm gonna sort these up into some piles and then we need to work on getting all of our boxes put together as well. I did my best to sort all of the different flavors out in a way that seemed fair especially for the little tear-all chocolates where we weren't all gonna be able to get the same flavors. I had no idea what any of those were because they weren't on any of the sheets and it was a real interesting guessing game when we got to try those. This one bag of chips is kind of deflated so I think this is gonna be my bag because I don't want to send one and have it shipped again without any air in it 
and all these chips break or be stale. So I'll just take these and send the fluffy bags along the way down the road. Okay, I have them all sorted out into our piles. Now I just need to get some boxes to ship them in. <laughs> Hi, Griffin. We were blessed with a visit from Griffin. <laughs> I'm gonna try to package up these chocolates into nicer containers so that they're not just, you know, loose and flapping around in a box, as well as get some boxes that I can ship everything in and we will assemble all of our gifts and get them ready. Hi, Simon. <laughs> can we get a word from you, sir? Would you like to comment to our guests? I was hoping to get him to meow into the microphone. I think this box might work for one of them, but I might need something bigger. I'm going to go dig around, find some appropriate shipping vessels and some ways to pretty up these chocolates and make them safe for packing. It's now the beginning of February and due to health reasons and your typical adult scheduling issues, we just got together last night to do our snack taste test. Coordinating four people's schedules across multiple time zones is a little bit challenging. We were all either busy or sick in turn, so there was always one of us who couldn't make it. But we finally made it happen though, even if it took over a month. It was totally worth the wait. We had so much fun. I really had a blast getting to try a bunch of different flavors of stuff that I'd never had before. All the different Kit Kats were really cool. A few of them I did not like at all. Um, a couple of them I really loved. Everybody had their different preferences, but I think that my two favorites were the lime and the dark chocolate. The all dressed chips are super yummy and tangy. They kind of remind me of a vinegar based like North Carolina barbecue sauce, if any of you have ever had that. They're really good and I know I'm gonna be upset when this bag is empty. I guess that's the downside of getting a bunch of international snacks is that you might get hooked and then always crave them. Like Tim Tams. Oh man, I need to double check and see if anybody sells Tim Tams around here. I mean, maybe they'll start making all dressed chips and some lime Kit Kats in the United States. You never know. But until then, I will just be over here drooling and dreaming of unattainable snacks. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching this video. My friends all loved the crocheted items that I made them and we had a blast sharing all those snacks together. I hope that you had fun watching. If you did, hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing. I upload every other Wednesday and I love to make new crochet friends. Speaking of crochet friends, follow me on social media. I am Graceface Creates on all platforms. If you need me, I'll be eating the rest of these all dressed chips in a corner by myself. <laughs> Thanks again for watching and happy crocheting.